That's yeah, what yeah. I'm mostly seeing. But like in, in uh, sci-fi fantasy, immortal just means that you can die. It's only talking about physical death. You can die, but you won't die of old age or disease. Yeah. You and then only- eternal is just like, you're eternal. almost like God, godlike. Like you've been around forever and you always will be around. Welcome to the Web of Tomorrow. Hey, I didn't say World of Tomorrow. That's good. In my In my uh, solo one last week, I uh, I totally said it like 10 times. I had to re-record, <laughs> like restart my recording like 10 times. It was so annoying. And then I thought about it. I was like, oh, I could just come back to this. I might as well just keep going. Oh, nice. Yeah, I only did two takes. You only did two takes? Yeah. Good job, dude. Good for you, freak. Today, we're going to talk about a little thing called unit testing. So this is going to be one of those things where Adam goes into it into a little bit more depth. I'll ask a bunch of questions. And yeah, so let's jump into this. So high level, let's just look at the very basics, the very surface of this deep depth that we could go into unit testing. Let's just look at the surface. What is unit testing at the surface? So unit testing is a type of automated testing. So that means that um, rather than writing your code and then going into a browser and clicking around and making sure everything works, you actually write code that will automatically test your code for you. And so every time you make a change to your code, you can run your test and make sure everything still does what you think that it does. Okay, so give us an example of what this would look like, the most simple example you can give. Yeah, so I don't know. Let's say you're testing. So with unit testing, you test the smallest unit of code possible. So um, that might be a function. So you're testing a function and all the different edge cases of that function. So... I don't know. An example could be a function that, um, yeah. Okay. So here's an example. I wrote a little practice, uh, bit of code one time and what it did was it took in a, a time. So like two thirty, and then the output of that function would be, uh, you know, half past two. Okay. So if you were to test that bit of code manually, you would have to Every time you made a change to the code, you would have to go and run the code, say, okay, does it work if I put in this input? Does it work if I put in this input? So instead, you would just write this code to test and say, all right, unit testing framework, Um, if I pass in 230, it should should return half past two. And you write that code one time, and it just, every time it runs, it makes sure that the output is correct. And then you can write a whole bunch of different uh, test cases. So... You know, um, if it's if you pass in twelve o'clock, then you want it to pass out noon. That's a different edge case. You you wouldn't want it to say you know twelve o'clock. You'd want it to say noon. So um, we should probably. I don't know if uh, we should probably find like a, an example online and add it to the bottom of this podcast so that people can take a look at like what something like this would look at look like. I think we've gotten far enough into the podcast where. As new, I guess, as they they were when we first started. Yeah. So yeah, I can link to um, some examples of code like that fuzzy time thing. So my next question is this: um, when you when we first started, you're like, "Hey, this is so awesome." Why is this awesome compared to like something else? Why is this just not another another boring idea or uh, bug searching fest? as as any as usual so what what makes it so exciting to you well um i think one thing that's really awesome is it takes out a lot of the monotonousness of testing your code manually uh you don't have to you can just stay in your code right so 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 what is what does testing your code manually look like maybe we need to make that differentiation there right so testing code manually would be Um, You write some code, then you go into the browser, and then you click around and make sure it works, right? And the problem is 
you you can't possibly test every single edge case every time you're clicking around. That would take forever. It would take like four hours of clicking around in a complex app to right. to, to test every edge case. And you might like you might accidentally like what you might be adding a new feature, but accidentally introduce a bug. And then you don't catch that for weeks and you don't know where that bug came from. But if you're doing unit testing all along, as soon as you broke one of the things you previously tested, you would know immediately. A good example. Well, it's funny that you're, you're, you're talking about how long it takes to do things manually. Um, it, it takes so long that, uh, they're actually hire people to do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. to literally go through and click everything and make sure everything is working like it should. But, um, I've, I've been finding that we, uh, we have this theme of autonomy almost, um, or independence, I guess I should say, not autonomy. Yeah, hopefully you're autonomous already as a person. <laughs> uh, but independence, you know, like being able to do things by yourself and scale by yourself without having to depend on like an organization. So if you're like an entrepreneur or something like that, then this is you know, another really great thing for you yeah. to be able to scale your product or your tool. And then another cool thing about uh, unit testing is that it it makes sure that all the individual parts of your program work um, like by themselves. It doesn't necessarily test that they all work together. That's actually a different type of testing. But it's like it's like if you were um, in a car factory and you're you're assembling all these different parts into one car, and hopefully at the end of the line that car works as a whole. But as you're putting it together, you're probably going to want to test each of the parts individually before you put it together. And so that's kind of what unit testing is. Um, if I think it's called like in, integration testing or end-to-end testing if you're testing it as a whole. So are there? Um, so is it all just like code base? Like, so what I guess I mean is, uh, would you need to run any external programs or uh, anything like from Node that would help you do this, or is it just you writing a, str- a sequence of code in your uh, document or an, an external document? Like, what do you do? Yeah, so it, it is all code, and there's frameworks or libraries to help you out with that. Um, I, I like using Mocha, and that's a JavaScript unit testing library. And uh, so you, you just have separate files. You might have a folder in your, in your project called test or testing or whatever. And then you put all your test files in there and you write code like, you know, if I call this function with this input, it, this should be the output. And, uh, and then you can, you can, like in Grunt or Gulp, you can have Grunt or Gulp um, like watching your files. And as soon as one of your test files or your actual files change, it just reruns your, your uh, code. And then right there in the console, it will say, you know, five out of seven tests pass or seven out of seven passed. And it'll be in red or green, depending on whether it passed completely. And if it doesn't pass, it will tell you like what the difference is. It might say like expected the output to be noon, but the actual output was half past, you know, or uh, 12 o'clock. So there's uh, there's also several other ones, right? Uh, yeah. There's let me see if I can find some. There's Jasmine. Jasmine is Karma. So Karma is really interesting. It's actually a test runner, and so I, I actually use Karma with Mocha. Okay. Uh, Mocha is the actual unit testing library, but Karma runs the test. And so what Karma does is it says, you know what, um, unit testing is really great, but different browsers are slightly different, right? Like it might run a little bit different in Firefox right. than it does in IE8. Yeah. <laughs> so what uh, what Karma does is it will actually open up your unit test in all the different browsers and actually run them in the real browsers. Oh, so you can test different environments. Yeah, so it can like automatically launch these browsers and run them in the browser. And then you can even um, connect to it, connect to Karma with a mobile device And so, and then right there in the console, it will say like, oh, it passed in Firefox, but it didn't pass in IE. Yeah. And that's awesome uh, because obviously it's not feasible or it's not scalable really to build your app for just one 
uh, browser. <laughs> you got to build it for as much as you can. And uh, so a te- like a test runner like that sounds really, um, and it looks like there's several different types of those. There's like Protractor, I guess, as well. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that one. I'm just looking at this document in Stack Overflow. Um, there's, uh, I don't know, what is this one? This is not, I think this might actually be a unit testing browser swarm. No idea. <laughs> this guy's got like a gajillion of these. So there's actually, there actually is a really great, um, Unit test tools. Okay, so so Protractor, Protractor is an end-to-end test framework for Angular. So it's yeah. actually not unit testing, but it's it's a okay. type, but end-to-end test is a type of automated test. Oh, gotcha. Okay, it's funny that they combine that with that on the document. And so yeah, Jasmine is probably it looks like it's one of the bigger ones, and then Mocha looks like it's one of the more comprehensive ones. Yeah, it can do quite a quite a few things. Nice. So how did you, uh, like, what was the context in which you started getting into unit testing? Oh, that's a good question. So unit testing is one of those things that everyone kind of knows that they should do, but a lot of people don't actually do. I don't remember how I first started. Because it's just like, why don't they do it? Is it because it's just like one more thing that they'll have to learn <laughs> to do? <laughs> Where, whereas like they already have something they can do. It's just monotonous and it's, it's, it takes a long time, but they, they already know how to do it. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons why people don't, uh, either they never heard of it or they don't know how to do it or they think it'll take more time. Or in the case of some projects, the, the thing you're working on might be really hard to test. Or maybe you have some really old code that's not very testable. So one of the things about unit testing is it's supposed to force you to write code that's more testable. And if your code is more testable, then it's better code. And what does more testable mean? Does it like does that mean that it fits the, the correct logic, that cr- fits the correct semantics and organization it should or yeah it has a lot, a lot to do with like flow. organization so yeah. remember how i talked about you're testing the smallest possible unit of your code if you've if you've written it you have to write your code in such a way that it's it's separate it has separate units in there and a lot of code is just like a jumbled mess of stuff that's intertwined and it's impossible to extract a single like a single unit to test, if that makes sense, right? So I'm reading here this word, test-driven development. What is, how does that fit into all of this? So test-driven development is a thing that um, it goes along with agile development a lot. It's like a, a philosophy or a certain way of doing it. And so with test-driven development, you don't write a single line of code until you've first written a test. And that test will obviously fail because you don't have any code yet, right? So you write a failing test, and then you write the code to make that pass. You write the minimum amount of code to make that pass. Then you write another failing test, and then you make that one pass. And, you know, when all your tests are passing, then you can do some refactoring. So this would almost be like not making use of the library and just doing this yourself? Or no, you can you, do both? You're still using a unit testing library. Okay. But Because I know a, I, I've, I've, like, created tests, but I don't know if I'm dis- having a disconnect. So, I mean, with... Uh, with test driven development, the whole purpose is like you you don't write any code unless you have a test, right? And you don't so you don't just go and write all of your code and then like a week later come back and write tests. That's not going to work very well. It's not going to be very useful. You're like starting the the race off uh, with baggy jeans almost. <laughs> you know you want to strip away all of the uh, the crap that you don't need. Um, does that make sense? My example. <laughs> That's a weird analogy. <laughs> What I mean is you want to be as effective as possible early, not yeah, later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like that. See, dude, you questioned me at first. Adam's face was all sort of scrumpled into doubt and <laughs> like, what the heck are you talking about? But I had a point. <laughs> I think I think that we covered uh, pretty much the definitely the basics of what this is and the, why it's so effective. And um, it's definitely something that uh, I was never taught about at least not to have that mindset and but it it really is useful in the end because you uh are accounting for um some things that will cause you cause you a whole sort of yeah it helps you sleep better at night really exactly yeah like i said you know it's it's setting everything up it's like putting your foundation into your house before you build it and not doing unit testing is like building your house and hoping that it stays up. Yeah, like uh, isn't there a saying with like uh, cutting wood and stuff? Uh, measure twice, cut once. 
Yeah. Yeah, that is a saying. I like that saying. I like it so much, I'm going to become a carpenter now. Nice. From now on. Except with unit testing, you're not just measuring twice. You're like measuring every time you save your file. All right. Now, now that we've, uh, we've pounded that into the ground, you guys better understand and make sure that everyone knows who taught you it, Adam. <laughs> And, and uh, join us next time as we talk about the proper ways to develop photographs, just because. With film, in case I wasn't clear, with film. <laughs> <laughs>